grown. All right, guys, this is Mongolian Mindset, and today we have the whole band with us. Today we have Shelly um, and Thomas, and we're interviewing Dominic. Uh, we're going to ask him questions, um, and he will respond to them, and we'll triangulate what his personality is. Uh, so could you introduce yourself, man? Uh, my name is Dominic. Uh, I like personality. I have a YouTube, and I'm just living life. Okay. Okay. Sounds like Instagram seven already. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do you see yourself in the next five to ten years, man? Uh, I'll have my IT degree, my IT business degree in management information systems, and I'll have a better job. Possibly have a girlfriend, and I'll probably be able to like save more money to invest and build up my financial dependence, like I'm aiming for. Okay. Um, what do you want to be remembered for? Uh, I want to be remembered for having been a sort of window mirror, a window for people to see more about human nature and gain more insights into the world and into themselves and a mirror for them to see their own humanity. Okay. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, what do you think is something that stresses you out? Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to like think of a specific time when I was stressed. I guess uh, having too much to do and not having the necessary resources or know-how and yet being expected to like get it done on a time on like a, what's it called? Uh, is it timeline? Uh, something like that. Like have being put under pressure to like perform under a limited amount of time with something I don't know how to do well. Mm. Sounds like SE inferior. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, my brain. Uh, what do you think is something you end up you might go to? What's the possibility for you going to jail for? Uh. I don't know. Uh, maybe impersonation, like falsely impersonating somebody. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Well, how do you think you do that? Oh, well, like maybe it's like I wanted to get into a bank account, so identity theft or something. You know, like just just get more money or, you know, things like that. Or I'd pretend to be live like a, a double life or something. Pretend to be someone I'm not. Mm -hmm. Or pretend to be a doctor, you know, something like that. Oh man, I remember, I remember this one guy who pretended to be a doctor in the Florida, like a kid or something, uh, and it worked. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. I forget what it was. It's like <laughs> it was wild, man. It was wild. And um, Frank, Frank Abagnale that did that. Uh, you remember the, the Leo DiCaprio movie? Catch me if you can, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Does it catch me if you can? Is that yeah, it? exactly. Yeah, that, that that guy. Yeah, he pretended to be a doctor. He pretended to be like a lawyer. All kinds of shit. Yeah, so. yeah something like that. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Okay. Um, what do you think? You... Is something that slows you down. Uh, stupid rules. <laughs> what do you got, Shelly? I was just gonna ask how, how you feel about being told what to do, but. What yeah. what kind of stupid rules? Like at my work, we have like trash bins inside the corrals, and we also have trash bins inside the vestibule we're supposed to bring parts into. And you're supposed to carry around a bag with us and pick up trash with it. So that's a stupid rule because it's like it's not necessary. It's already covered. Gotcha. If you could have any job in the world, what would you go for? Anything is open for you. Uh you mean okay you said job okay I'll, I'll, <laughs> uh Pro profession vocation oh. <laughs> uh i guess one of those people who like teach people like natural skills like tracking animals telling the weather uh making habitat you know things like that like i like i very much like primitive living so i'd be one of those people who teaches that for a living 
Gotcha. Okay. Um, hmm. Maybe what are some things that cause you to feel stressed out? Sorry, we paused too long, Mercer. I think we already said that, Shelly. Oh, wait. What? Yeah, I think you said that earlier with the stressed out. You kind of said, like, giving a timeline and not having the resources. Jesus Christ. Where was I? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if I sped your life up to the end of it, what would be something you think you missed out on? Uh... That's hard. I don't know. Um, maybe not visiting enough places around the world. Mm -hmm. well, you like to get out of move, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to travel. I'm, I'm planning on traveling soon, so I've been saving up. Mm -hmm. um, how do you know what someone else says is true? I don't know if what somebody says is true. Yeah. Uh, it depends on what they're saying and the context and how, if whether they're a stranger or a friend and how, I guess, logically cons consistent they are, um, uh, subtle cues they give off in their body language and in their tone of voice and things like that. There are also different factors. Okay, if I gave you two articles that were saying two different things scientifically, how would you know which one's true or false? Uh, that would depend on my familiarity with scientific articles that are accurate. And the I'd also look at the procedure they followed throughout the process. And I look at their manner of, I guess, interpretation, their manner of understanding their their um, their research and what they what they did. Okay. What's a big thing you fear? I fear, I guess, living a meaningless life, like a life that does not fulfill my destiny, that does not live up to becoming who I'm supposed to be, do what I'm supposed to do in this world. Okay. Um, if you were going to change the world, how would you go about doing that? Ah, uh, that's hard. I guess first I'd want to change human beings by optimizing them in some way, whether in their ethics, in their cognition, in their physiology. Because I believe that, you know, the world of human beings are the way it are because of how human beings are. So if you change human beings, then you improve the world. Okay. Um, what do you think is one skill that everybody should know? One skill one should know. Uh, I guess it depends on well, I guess you're assuming like in this culture and in our time in this time. Um um I'd say organization, which includes budgeting, planning, like all those different things that help you like run your life in a smooth way. Okay. Well, it comes, you ask a question for me so I can write it down quickly. Gotcha. Um, if you had three wishes, what would you wish for? Three wishes. First wish. I'd wish for, I guess, to improve our capacity in terms of like our brain capacity, our physiological capacity, like just make us more optimal in a way that can help us get on with better enterprises and games. I'd also wish for uh, wisdom or enlightenment to like know how to proceed in life 
and to know like the optimal courses of how to like unfold life. And last, I'd wish for um, more resources, more stuff to work with, to do things with and make things happen in the world, to co-create with the world. Okay. Um, do you feel as though uh, you're limited to your own resources to, to a degree or like, I, I, I hear you saying that a lot, so. Uh, well, resource has become very important for me right now since I got sick. Yeah. In the past, I just kind of like improvised. I just kind of like just surfed things. Mm -hmm. But now as I get older and I'm realizing like I have to become more like, uh, competent and mature and learn how to manage my life and stuff, I'm seeing the importance of resources in different categories from theory to practice. Hmm. Okay, dope, man. Uh, yeah, um, Out, well, outside of uh, like friends or family, uh, what, what are what's most important to you? Um, I guess physical competence. Mm -hmm. Like just physical health. I like feeling very sharp and in tune with the world and feeling very strong. That's one of the things I miss about when I was healed. Mm -hmm. Being able to dance and sing and run mm -hmm. and jump and lift. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, um how's uh how was your childhood? Uh my childhood was pretty fun. Like I, I spent most of it outside, and then I spent some of it inside, sometimes studying. But most of all, I just played a lot and explored the world around me. You you said you wanted to travel. I don't I don't think you mentioned uh, where you wanted to travel to. Like at what uh, what places you want to hit? I want to hit Japan, Paris, Israel. Yeah. Uh, each for different reasons. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that was going to be my follow up. Whether there's like any kind of rhyme or reason, uh, like a uh, among the places you want to visit. Uh, well, Japan because I like anime, and also I like their culture. Samurais, you know, Musashi, uh -huh. Oto, you know, like okay. things like that. I like their culture. Uh, Jer uh, Israel because I want to visit where Jesus lived, and just sort of like travel in his footsteps to visit the places he visited to see if I can situate myself in that particular timeline and France because I was learning French and I want to be able to like practice it more and Paris sounds like a, a pretty cool city yeah definitely how do you, yeah, how do you learn new things sorry no it's, it's, that's fine <laughs> what did you say how do you go about learning new things? Uh, typically, I I just kind of jump into it and it's trial and error and break things down into their most simplest, their basics. And then I scaffold from there. And then I try things out. I test things out. And then I connect it to other things that I've understood or that I've proved reliable. And I just keep going from there. Yeah. What got you into typology? Yeah. What? What got you into typology? Uh, during a period when I was lost in my life due to religious confusion and wanting some philosophical clarity, I was looking for a sort of a psychology of philosophy to be able to like, because I felt like if I couldn't use my mind to understand the world, maybe I can understand the mind. So I was looking for something that would give me access into understanding how the mind works to like be able to think through different problems and think through different states of being a person. And yeah, I, I'm, I meant to ask, because uh, you said you wanted to go to uh, go to Israel. I got, so what, what are you, what are your thoughts or feelings on like religion or Christianity? Like what's, what's your stance on that? 
Uh, I'm currently trying to be a follower of Jesus. Okay. I'm not a very I'm not a very good one, but that's my aim. After lots of religious experience, exploration, getting lost, trying on different perspectives, taking on different states of being. being you know, like it's just been a it's been a journey, basically. So, how, how do I put this? So, uh, what are what why why uh, a follower of Jesus though? Why is why is that the right path? I guess that's like like because I I have these questions, and I guess that's probably the thing I struggle with the most is what what makes Christianity or maybe or it's it just like being a follower of Jesus. What makes that the right one? Um, I guess some of it is. I can approach it from different angles, from where I where I enter into it, and from what it says about itself. Okay. And how it just compares to other things. So, what it says about itself is Christianity presents itself in the sense of like uh, being the absolutes reaching down to us, while other worldviews are us trying to reach the absolutes or trying to appease it, whether through mystical states or through practices or through, you know, to reach enlightenment or reach a, a mystical state of oneness or or through trying to, like, earn our way into paradise or whatever it is. But Christianity posits that the absolute actually reaches down to us and per makes a way for it us through it. And but and this offer can be taken and, t and tried by us. You know, like, there's a verse in Psalms that's like, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's a sense of, like, you have to actually take it on and test it. And I like that feature of like it's offering itself to be tested to like see like are there actual is there actually merit to this? Can I actually have a religious experience from this? Can I actually be transformed by this? So where I enter it is like I come from a background where my mom, my uncle are both prophets. They both had dreams that come true. They had visions. My uncle has healed people. So it's like I come from a world where I'm aware that there's more to this world. There's more things that happen. And mm -hmm. I also entered in the sense of like, I personally want self-transformation. That's what a lot of my truth seeking has been for. And I want to know what kind of movie I'm in. I want to know what reality I'm in. Am I in the Hindu movie? Am I in the Buddhist movie? Am I in the Christian movie? I'm wanting to know where I'm situated in so I can know how to act. Yeah. I hope that made sense. Yeah, no, no I did. Uh, but uh, what... A what else can you say about like uh because you said you had like i think religious experiences was the phrase you used like anything else like that let that i guess that led you uh to christianity well some of it is like you can say proximity yeah like i was i was raised with it so it's closest to me to so test okay. out other gotcha. things are further off like i've tried mm -hmm. I've, like i've meditated i've done i've been practiced buddhism I practice mysticism, you know, like mystical practices and stuff like that, esotericism, hermeticism, and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. Christianity's claim puts it in terms of like, it does not make it up to you. It makes it up to the absolute that's doing it. So there's a sense of like, you have to decenter from yourself and give it to them and then see what they do and see what results from it. So that feature of it is very fascinating to me because other practices, other perspectives kind of put the power in your hands in some way. Whether in Buddhism you're doing practices to like make up for your karma for your potential rebirths, or whether in mysticism you're trying to enter a state of some sort of monistic oneness, or Hinduism where you're trying to become one with the Brahman, the you know and stuff like that. So it's just like it puts it as a sense of like you can't do it on your own. So I find that fascinating. I'm like, can I? Is it true that I can't do it on my own? And what can this offer me that other things can't offer me? And there's this sense of like, um, um, in it, you become a new creature and you have to inhabit it and become part of that reality to see what unfolds from it. So I can't put my foot in it and put my foot out of it at the same time. So there's a sense of like, I have to commit and see what happens. And so that's what I decided to do and see how my life unfolds in it. I hope that gotcha. makes sense. Yeah, no, no. You you break things down very well, so. Yeah, yeah, man. Pretty dope. Uh, how did you find us on um, uh, YouTube or anything? How, how'd you get into that? Oh, I had been watching different YouTube channels with MBTI and different people typing. Mm -hmm. And I listened to you guys type my friend, Jeff. Oh, Jeff's your friend? Yeah. Which Jeff is it? Jeff? ENTJ? 
and TJ, uh, Venezuelan Canadian. He has like a he has like a French uh accent. Yeah, he, yeah, he's black, right? He's black. No, he's actually Hispanic. He's Venezuelan. Really? He just lives in Canada. Oh, yeah. Shit. I talked to him the other day. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, what what uh draws you to him? Uh, I like. I guess he's honest, mm -hmm. and I like honesty, and he's very like real, and he's very like, he's very much, he's very Promethean. He sees it as like he wants to bring the fire of truth, mm -hmm. and he wants to contribute something to the world, and he wants to like become a a big a great person. And I admire greatness in people. You know, I want I encourage everyone to achieve their own greatness. So anyone who has that kind of orientation towards the world, I naturally, I'm naturally drawn to, and I want to encourage their best. Uh, do you feel like you see very far in ahead of people, or, how, or what do you think about that? Uh, not really. Mm -hmm. It's more like I make logical inferences about the future, but I don't actually envision it. It's very hard for me to envision the future, and some of it is due to like having a bad imagination. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, I think we got to type here, man. Um. I don't think you will be surprised. Um, so what I noticed, what we noticed on very easily was uh, your direct. Um, even though you say a lot, you're saying it very rapidly and very fast. You're all about the, the journey of everything, um, the progression of how things move. Um, so that makes you direct progression, okay? Because you're journey focused. Like you said, you, you're on a journey, man. Um, you like to jump in and improvise and figure out how, how, things, how things go. Um, you're not planning before that that's what you say when you're trying to learn something new that's more of a progression mindset um and then we're being direct you, you're choosing your role in the conversation you're pretty much talking down if you can so that eliminates you down to four types um you're you're very systematic you're all about like in, in, uh in, like improvising Optimizing. um that type of thing so that would make you systematic and a uh, tefi user um, you're very, you seem pretty proficient in um, that, and you're abstract, man. You're, you're pretty abstract, okay? Um, like, the first thing you said was, like, what you wanted yeah. to be before was, like, ref like being a mirror for other people to see their souls or something. But if I'm saying that right, that was off the bat you said that. So, mm -hmm. um, that being said, um, that makes you an INTJ. Um, so. Oh, that's pretty cool. What do you think? <laughs> What's funny is like this girl part on in this group I'm a part of was suggesting I might be an INTJ based off of like how I talk in my videos. Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, um, I seem very abstract and have lots of like NI insights, but mm -hmm. I present it in a very I have, I have like a fluency with how I talk, mm -hmm. which she care she associates with TE. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's interesting. I mean that's that I'm I'm willing to take that. I can I can work with that. You did. What'd you have yourself as? I don't know what I had myself as. I've been typed as different types, man. Like, I've been typed as ISTP, ESTP, ISFJ, INTP, INFJ. Really? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, man. It's pretty pretty easy. Um, I thought within the first five minutes, dude, I could tell you were an INTJ, man. Um, you seem to have a lot of NI insights. Um, and like you said, like the way you do NI insights is a little bit different. You use a more of a logical way to do it. Um, as in like myself, it's not as a logical as yours is. Like yours is like, okay, this is happening, that's happening. I just see it. It's like I, I I'm not making like logical inferences or anything. You just like, okay, like it's like you're just like doing variables with it. Um, I don't know if yeah. Shelby and Tommy see it to that degree or whatnot, or is if that's how they use it or not, but yours seem to definitely step step out there. Um, Shelly, do you see it that way or no? Yeah, but I can't explain it as well as he could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was kind of like, <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Crazy day. that you understand yourself so well. Yeah, mm -hmm. seem to understand and I pretty damn well, dude. Yeah, uh, when you're talking about transformations and whatnot, that's yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Okay. Metaphysical perspective. I'm not saying I'm not. So. Yeah, um, INTJ, um, Enneagram. This is gonna be tough, man. This is this is tough. So Thomas, go ahead and like start narrowing down here. He's not a one. All right, we can take one off the board. Okay. Well, we could. Well, we could take. 
one, two, three, four, six, eight, and nine off the board, I think, pretty easily. Um, yeah. I think I think we could take all those off the board. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's an eight. Um, I think he's either a, a five or seven. Yeah. I, I think he might have some characteristics of seven, but I think he, he's actually a five. The fives, I don't know if you know any grandpa fives are like very, very analytical. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, I'm a five. Shelly's a five. We tend to be analytical. We're not, uh, we're not very, you know, we tend not to be very emotional kind of people. Like we are accused of being like robotic or like, you know, you know, like almost like machines. That's where like where that stereotype comes from. Like uh, the, the fives. Because if you're an INTJ four, you're not going to be like that. You're going to be quite different. They're, they're going to be more emotional, more you know, quote unquote human, um, you know, compared to the INTJ five. Mm -hmm. um, you you did talk about traveling and you know certain things, um, and you know fives often struggle with taking action. But you seem like you're a five who's maybe overcome that. You you seem like you don't have a problem taking action. And I, I it just even though you're a five, that doesn't mean that you can't travel or like you know. I, when I was younger, I never really thought about traveling, but now that I'm older, like, and, you know, just because of certain interests I have, there, there are like certain places like, like you that I would like to go to. And I feel like I'd be missing out on like missing out on life if I didn't see those things. So yeah. I, I think, you know, yeah, I think that we have those similarities, but uh, I think compared to me that you're just, you're like, I struggle with taking action. A lot of the time you seem like you're like, you know, uh, I could be wrong about this, but you don't seem like you really have that problem as much as I do. So um you seem like a real go-getter which is kind of initially we kind of i think we were thinking you're a seven like you want to go out there and enjoy and like experience life you want to experience everything and i think when he asked you the question about uh like it, you know fast forward like 100 years like and what would you regret um you, i don't remember exactly how you answered it but it's something about like i guess like not like not experiencing things if i'm not mistaken that's how you answered it um <laughs> But I, but on, to be honest out that, that would be one of the things that i would regret too is like just not you know there's things that you know, the, the mind is, the mind is a great thing. You could do incredible things with the mind, but at the end of the day, I think, yeah, I would feel like I, I missed out on certain things if I don't do them. So, um, I don't know yeah. if you guys want to add any more to that, but. I mean, you executed it perfect. Um, I don't really have anything to say. Yeah. I have you taken any Enneagram test at all? Uh, I did when I was depressed in high school and in love and I can't afford <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you got four yeah because i was the person in love so two yeah. <laughs> the person in love. Uh, yeah, yeah well as you might know like uh with with enneagram you have the wings so you could have a four wing or a six wing you probably lean more towards a six i would think um I, I'm, I'm just i'm just speculating but i, I think it's just just my theory i think you can kind of like swing either way like i think i'm i'm a five wing six but there's a part of me that aspires to be a four like i kind of wish i was more artistic and more like uh more like about my individuality like that kind of shit but i'm not i'm probably more like a six where i want like i want like stability and responsibility and that kind of shit um more systematic I yeah yeah yeah, um, I think a lot of the Enneagram tests are like emotionally based, but like if you do it the way um, the Stanford Review talks about or the way that uh, Don Rizzo talks about, you can pretty much find your Enneagram every time or, yeah, you'll find it pretty much every time. Uh, but like they say, like being stressed or secure can change. You can take on um, attributes. So like if you're secured, you might take on some of the attributes of mine. Um, which is an eight. And if you're stressed, you could take on attributes of a seven. Yeah. So, so have to be a positive of that. But overall, man, you're INTJ and you seem to be doing great things, man. I'm looking forward uh, to seeing what you do. I don't know if you're in the group, man, but I'd love to see you and Jeff on our like monthly calls where we all get together and we talk about the goals we did last month and we talk about the goals we're setting for the following month and we talk about Instagram, new insights we got, um typology or whatnot it's all like a two-hour thing where everybody gets on and we just talk and have a good time that'd be cool yeah we always do it the first friday of the new month um 4 p.m 4 p.m eastern so it'd be dope to have you there man you got any questions for us uh uh not really no, no i just <laughs> find it interesting because <laughs> No, 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 no. This, this, this is very cool. No, no, this is interesting. 
Well, um, it was awesome to have you, man. I hope to see you in the group, man. Uh, we're going to get out of here, man. Yeah, Take it. Yeah, it was a pleasure, buddy. Have a good one. You too.